Hey there, welcome back to Damn Tasty Vegan. It's your friend Maria Rose. Today we're gonna save some money and cook some delicious meals. I'm gonna show you some budget plant-based dinner ideas for under $30 a week. This comes out to be about $2 a meal per person. So before we dive into the recipes, here's some things that I have to do to help me stick to a budget. The first thing I try to do is to plan my meals out for the week and only buy items that I need for those meals. <laughs> I can easily get carried away in the grocery store. So to plan my meals out, I try to look in my cupboards and pantry first to see what I have on hand and then build meals around that so that I have to buy less things from the grocery store. I had a lot of dried beans on hand, so I decided to make chili baked potatoes this week. And the second thing I always try to do to stick to a budget is to shop for groceries online and do grocery pickup. If I shop online, I can see the total right there, and if I find that I'm over budget, I can readjust and take things out of my cart super easily. I also like to shop from the sale items first, so I try to see what items are on sale, and I try to meal plan around those sale items. Although if you do go into the grocery store to shop, make sure you check out the discount rack in the produce section. A lot of grocery stores have this. It's a super small little rack that they'll have shoved in the corner and it's produce that's about to go bad. A lot of times they'll put a bunch of produce together in a bag and sell it for like a dollar. So be on the lookout for that. You might have passed by it and not even known it was there. So this is everything I bought for this week's grocery haul and it came out to be about $29. So let's get into some recipes and I'll show you exactly what I made for dinner this week. Up first, we have just a good old bean chili over baked potatoes. Chili is really affordable as it is, but then when you make your own beans at home, oh my gosh, it becomes insanely affordable. And chili is so great because you can make a big batch of this and then eat it all week. It'll fill you up for a long time. And it's so delicious and comforting, especially as the weather starts to get cold. So first I just chopped up all of my ingredients and I had this really sad looking jalapeno in the fridge from like a couple weeks ago. So I wanted to make sure that didn't go to waste. <laughs> oh my God, <laughs> it's a strong onion, holy shit. <laughs> so from here on out, it's really simple. It's all about just putting it all into the pot and cooking it down. The recipe for this is on my blog, so I will link it in the description box. And I really love to let the spices bloom in the oil before adding them to the chili. It just helps to develop their flavor and bring out the flavor more. It's so good. And then I add my tomato paste and garlic and canned tomatoes and then some cocoa powder, some soy sauce and brown sugar. Those all help to kind of balance all of the flavors and deepen the flavor of the chili even more. Then I add in those beans that I cooked the night before, and then you can use water or veggie bouillon paste to, or vegetable broth. And then I just let this bad boy simmer for like 40, 45 minutes um, on a low simmer, a little bit lower than what it's showing there. And this just comes out so delicious and filling and comforting. And I top this with some dairy-free sour cream. And I'm going to be using that dairy-free sour cream in a couple other recipes as well, just to be more resourceful with it. Oh, this has been just simmering on the stove for like 40 minutes. And my house smells so good. It's like such a nice cozy fall day. And I baked the potatoes like perfectly. If you want to learn how to bake the perfect potatoes without using aluminum foil, then check out my blog post about that. You get crispy skin and then perfect fluffy inside. I'll link that in the description box. Mm. Chili's perfect, potatoes are perfect. Mm. Perfect fall meal. Then I made this creamy butternut squash pasta. <laughs> this night was kind of interesting. I wasn't sure what I wanted to make. And I had this butternut squash on hand that I knew I wanted to cook. And I was thinking about making a soup, but then I was like, I really want pasta too. So I just thought to combine the two. <laughs> so first I just roasted up that butternut squash and seasoned it up with a little bit of oil and salt and garlic powder. And my house smelled so good when it was roasting. And then I had these lovely tomatoes from my garden and my husband grew and I just roasted those up as well because they were starting to go bad. And it just was so delicious with just a little bit of oil and some salt and they just have such a rich flavor when you roast them, it's so good. And then I just chopped up some onion and some ginger, I minced up some ginger and cut up some garlic as well. 
And then when the tomatoes and butternut squash were done roasting, I decided to make a creamy pasta sauce with it. So I put them in the blender with a little bit of unsweetened oat milk and some salt and garlic powder. And you could even put in like a little bit of vegetable broth in there. That would be really good. And I blended that up. Then I just sauteed all the veggies. I had some veggies that were going bad in the fridge. I had some mushrooms on hand that were gonna go bad. So I added those in. My husband really loves peas, so I added in peas as well. And then I just kind of heated all that up on the stove, added in that creamy butternut squash sauce and the pasta, and I made sure to reserve some of the pasta water and added that in to help thicken it up and make it a little bit more creamy. And then I seasoned it up with just garlic powder, onion powder, salt, whatever you have on hand. And then to make it even more creamy, I put in some of that sour cream. You could also put in uh, canned coconut milk if you have that on hand. I think I put a little bit of that in as well because I had a can in my pantry from like months ago. And then you just season it with some salt and that's it. it. This actually turned out really good. I was really surprised, it was delicious. Now let's make this delicious creamy veggie orzo. I love to have orzo on hand because number one, it's really cheap and affordable. And number two, it's great for a throw together one pot dinner during the week. So first we start off with sauteing some onion and some mushrooms. After that was sauteed down, I used some of these frozen veggies. I bought this big bag from Costco and it lasts me like a month. I love it. It's great for whenever you need veggies, but you don't want to go out and buy fresh veggies. So you can add just vegetables to any meal. I love them as well because they're already seasoned. So you don't have to add a lot of seasonings and they're so delicious. But if you don't have a Costco nearby, don't worry, just use whatever are your favorite frozen veggies that you can find at your local grocery store. Bonus points if they are seasoned. So I just added some vegetable bouillon and some seasonings and let that cook down until the orzo was cooked and most of the liquid was absorbed. And then I added in some white beans and some of that dairy-free sour cream to cream it up a little bit. This would also taste really good if you had a pesto on hand, like if you had a garden full of basil and you wanted to make your own pesto. This would be delicious, but I didn't have that on hand at the moment, but it was still very, very good. Highly recommend it. Super easy throw together meal that's really filling and comforting and uses up veggies in your fridge or freezer. So last but not least, we have the cheapest and quickest meal, refried bean tostadas. These are great for when you don't feel like cooking, when you just need something fast and easy and delicious. <laughs> so just warm up your refried beans. You can warm them up on the stove or even in the microwave if you're feeling extra lazy. And that's it. Then you just top it with your favorite toppings that you have on hand. I had some iceberg lettuce that was really affordable. I think it was on sale. And I got some avocados that were going bad for cheap and just topped it with some red onion. And once again, some of that dairy-free sour cream. See, I said we were gonna use it in a couple different meals and I did not lie. And then we topped it with some hot sauce. Euro's gotta have hot sauce, it's so good. I love having tostadas when I've had tacos too many weeks in a row. It's just a great way to change things up. So I hope you enjoyed all of these recipes. Let me know what you wanna see next and subscribe if you haven't yet and I'll see you in the next video, bye.